Hi chemistry students. Today we're going to talk about molecular structure and acid strength. Um, just to remind you that we have six strong acids. Some people might say there's a seventh one out there. Uh, we'll stick with our six. That's what our textbook says and most people agree on this. But we've got nitric sulfuric, perchloric, um, and then HI, HBr, HCl, all three of those. Um, just remind you that whenever we talk about a acid and its acid dissociation, we're going to have to, we're going to write uh, that uh, a proton will be donated from the acid to water in this instance. And so uh, we'll see this pair of electrons and that hydrogen, okay, that proton interacting to form as an end result, the nitrate anion in water in this case plus the hydronium ion. And similarly, if we saw something like with sulfuric acid, we'd see the same kind of game. We'd see the bisulfite anion being created. There's our final creature being made. Fantastic. So this is just to remind you of what goes on when we have one of these reactions, an acid-base reaction going on between the acid um, and water acting as the base. But what's interesting is we're, we're trying to figure out how the structure of these acids in, and, and the acid strength are related. So we have to focus on what is important, and what's important is the protic bond. The protic bond. In this case, the protic bond is the bond that was broken uh, between the proton and the anion that remains. So, or the conjugate, if you must, the conjugate species. So here's the conjugate base of the first reaction. Here's the conjugate base of the second reaction, right there. So we see the protic bond in these cases, in these particular examples, are both OH bonds. They don't have to be. But the key thing is we've just, we've just said that the acidic bond, that's the bond that breaks the it's the bond with the acidic proton we're going to call that often the protic bond and so what we'll be really interested today is the protic bond strength All right, so there are a few types of acids out there that we should just be aware of. There's binary acids, things like HCl, HBr, HF. Those are all binary, and there's also others like HCN. Okay, if you look at it, they're made from a proton and then some sort of anion. And so, and these are not oxoanions, so that's one of the key things. The oxoanions are, are their own little type of, um, of acid. So binary acids. The oxo acids then, they make a different kind of, uh, of acid, a different family I should say, and all of them share in common the same type of protic bond. In the binary acids, the protic bond changed from, from acid to acid, but here the protic bond is quite different. As you see in each of these two cases that I've given as an example, the protic bond is an OH. So when you see something like phosphoric acid, you have to remember that it's not a bunch of oxygens bonded together with the phosphorus and hydrogens popping off. No, that phosphorus is in the middle. If you see something like bromic acid right here, in this bromic acid, the bromine is in the middle. It's the central atom. And remember, the charge of the bromate, minus one, is the number of single bonds and also the number of protons that we'll have. In phosphoric acid, the number of the charge is negative three, therefore there should be three, one, two, three single bonds between the phosphorus and the oxygens. Just remember that you can draw these very quickly. So this is one other type. They all have the same type of protic bond, which is an OH. We also have carboxylic acids, and these are fairly common acids for us to talk about in chemistry, uh, especially biochemistry, but these uh, carboxylic acids, they are of the form 
R, which can be any organic or any inorganic, anything that can single bond here, okay? Anything at all. And then we've got our carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then single bonded to an OH. And our protic bond is right here once again. And if you take a good look at this, this is also the protic bond is Product bond is OH again. So carboxylic acids and the oxoanions all share the same type of, of, of um, product bond. So to get a handle on all this, we need to re realize that if a bond, if a, an acid's strong, that means it readily gives up its proton. That means that proton must be held very loosely. So that means a weak product bond a weak protic bond is the same thing as a strong acid. And we also know that a strong acid has a large Ka. So how do we compare these based upon structure? Well, there's two clues that we need to look at. First off is take a look at this set of data here. If you look at it, it appears that by adding electron density between the nuclei, that bonds become stronger. And in general this is true. As long as those electrons are going into bonding molecular orbitals, we're okay. However, this on the contrary is also true. If we remove electron density, then we would expect there to be a weaker bond. So if I have any two atoms a and B bonded together, if I can somehow get the electrons to not be shared as well, okay, so poor sharing would be weaker. How can I make two atoms not share very well? Well, the best way is to have a large electronegativity difference. So a large difference in electronegativity weakens the covalent nature of the bond. So a large electronegativity difference means that there will be a weaker bond. So we now have a way to look at two acids and kind of decide which is going to be stronger if they have some similar properties to them. So it would be based on the electronegativity difference. So the bigger the electronegativity difference, we would expect to have a weaker bond and therefore a stronger acid. But let's look at one more set of data before we make a, a, complete, um, a complete analysis. Here's a set of acids which have a definite and easy to see electronegativity difference. That is the halogen acids here. So we have HF, HCl, HBr, and HI. And if you'd expect HF, which has the largest of all electronegativity differences, we'd expect that to be the strongest acid. However, it's the weakest of all of these. So there must be something that's a more overriding factor when there are already large electronegativity differences or similar electronegativity differences. Because fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are all highly electronegative, the only difference here is the size of these atoms and how they compare to our hydrogen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a hydrogen S orbital right here. Here's an S orbital for the hydrogen. Well, if I look at this from the point of view of chlorine or from fluorine, fluorine is going to have a very similar sized P orbital overlap with it. So that's hydrogen fluoride. If I do the same thing with HCl, what I'm going to find is the same size proton, because it's not going to change, but the chlorine is going to be a much larger orbital. And if I go on to HBr, as the, my last example, I'm going to find that the same size proton, but an even bigger p orbital overlapping it. So put the phases on here. 
won't affect things. And my drawings, of course, are not very good. But the key thing is, what we notice is, as this orbital overlap becomes different, as the larger orbital tries to overlap with the protic hydrogen, we immediately see that the bond strength must be going down, that the bond strength must be reducing. So we can make an assessment here. We can say that poor orbital overlap causes weaker bonds. Therefore, we know that poor overlap is kind of equivalent to stronger acids. So it appears that we have two things to look at, electronegativity difference and orbital overlap. And, and it also appears that the orbital overlap will dominate electronegativity difference. So how do we know when to use one? Well, if we've got the same type of protic bond, we obviously have to use electronegativity difference. But if we have a different type of protic bond, then we need to use uh, the overlap difference. So let's go take a look at an example. Why is HBrO2 a stronger acid than HBrO? Well, first we'd have to draw these out so we could see what they look like. But uh, that's quickly done because BrO2 and BrO- both have a single uh, charge of negative one, we know that there's one OH and the other oxygens are all going to be double bonded. So here are our two acids. Every detail done for you. So there's our two acids. So if we take a look at this, they have the same exact protic bond, so that it can't be orbital overlap because they have the same orbital overlap. Oxygens are the same size, their orbitals are the same size in the two molecules. So which is the stronger of the two? Well, let's think about the electronegativity difference then. The BR, the BR over here, this guy, is all by itself in pulling on that oxygen, trying to remove the electrons from the OH bond to make it weaker. However, when we come to the bromus acid, when we take a look at this, it's not just a BR that's pulling, there's also a highly electronegative, there's also a highly electronegative oxygen. And it's going to withdraw electrons from the bromine, making the electron or making the bromine even more likely to pull the electrons from the other oxygen. So there's a general trend of electron density moving away from the protic bond, and so this is going to have a weaker protic bond. If it has a weaker protic bond, that means, therefore, it's a stronger acid. Let's do one more example. Which is the stronger acid? H2O or H2S. So what we have are two molecules which we would draw in identical fashions, Lewis structure wise. So <clears throat> they're both from the same family uh, on the periodic table, sulfur's one, one row below oxygen. So they're very similar uh, in the sense that the electronegativities don't differ by a lot. However, because sulfur is below oxygen in the periodic table, its orbitals are much larger. So we would expect that the oxygen would have a orbital about this size interacting with the hydrogen, and the sulfur would have one that's quite a bit bigger. And therefore, we'd see worse orbital overlap. And this is essentially saying orbitals are, are significantly different in size, significantly different in size. So because it's worse orbital overlap, we have a weaker protic bond, which means that we have a stronger acid. There you have it. That's a little bit of a tutorial on acid and base strength based upon the structure.